Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, Mohamed Al Khrafi, I'm the head of operations at the National Bank of Kuwait. Uh, with me is Mohamed Akram, he's the head of segments at Consumer Banking. Uh, we're here to provide you with an update on uh, where we are with Ripple, how we got to know them, and where we're going. Uh, first of all, let me start with congratulating both Anwar and Saud on such a successful event. Uh, the conference has, uh, I know this is the second year for ECHO, but the feedback so far is amazing. Uh, the level of discussions and participants speaking, as well as the panel discussions, are great and uh, very insightful. So, uh, well, M MBK has always strived to be the first in adopting new technologies and adapting new technologies, bringing them in Kuwait and giving value to our customers. Uh, but we don't just settle with innovation, we look at ways to make, to commit and create value. So it's bringing them and then making it uh, count, making it relevant, build up the momentum. Going many years back, starting with ATMs, when they first launched in Kuwait, it wasn't much, used much and uh, there wasn't much to do on ATMs. Today we have the biggest network uh, of ATMs, we're talking 300 ATMs between uh, ATMs, cash deposit machines, multi-currency, interactive uh, teller machines as well. And they are responsible for 11 times the transactions that happen in the branches. So throughout our branch network, the number of transactions on the ATMs is 11 times more than what happens in the branches. And then we launched online banking back in 1998, that's 20 years now. Uh, when it was first launched, again, it was not as, as successful as it was, but over time, the transactions grew and grew, and we started to see two and three million transactions done on online banking. Then we launched mobile banking, that's around eight years ago now. Uh, we are still, I mean, it was one of the, it was a very successful launch, instantly picked up momentum. We're seeing more mobile transactions today than online. And it makes sense because it's a high penetration in Kuwait and it's easier, more accessible, everyone has a mobile phone and as long as you provide it to the customer, you make it convenient, they will use it. We're expecting this year to close with around 4 million transactions on mobile banking. Um, we are adding features as we go. In 2018 we added 13 new uh, features on mobile and this year we're also planning, uh, planning to add a lot of features. In fact on Sunday we have a new release with two new features. So uh, in 2016, we, we introduced Tap and Pay. We started with the NFC cards, and then we had the wearables and the NFC stickers. And the uh, wearables were the first in Kuwait, and the NFC stickers were the first in the MENA region. Uh, we made sure we had enough point of sale machines that serve these uh, NFC cards and products, and again, it picked up quite quickly. Uh, today we have the largest point of sale network and uh, the, the most uh, number of enabled NFC cards. So again, with keeping up the momentum and pushing and committing to, to what we want to, uh, to add as value. Uh, blockchain, obviously, we're here. Is, is, uh, we see a lot of potential in it. And when Ripple started talking and comparing payments and how it should be as fast and as convenient as sending an email, they immediately grabbed our attention. I mean, we've, we've always focused on cross-border payments. We've managed to bring down the transfer times from a few days to a few hours using existing technologies even before Ripple. But again, that's always dependent on cut-off times, dependent on weekends, on working hours, and the currency it's going to. There are so many factors to that in between. Today with Ripple, we have a product which is Direct Remit. It's available online only. Soon it will be available on mobile. You can send a wire transfer from Kuwait to MBK Jordan and it will reach there within seconds. 24 hours a day, seven days a week without any delay. So that's where we, we want to go. That's what we anticipate. That's what we want to leverage this technology most and we hope to expand to greater areas, to new corridors, looking in different countries, not just uh, our network but also leveraging on our existence in 14 different countries, over four continents, and uh, really pushing this product. Uh, so I'll hand over to Mohamed, who will be talking more on blockchain and Ripple. I think a brief introduction has already been given by Mr. Khurafi. Let me just take you what is in for NBK as far as the Ripple, the blockchain technology is concerned. Uh, technically, when we talk about blockchain, uh, most of the consumers, they get confused. Oh, they are talking about Bitcoin. So I think 
that we should leave it uh, separately as far as the digital currency is concerned and let me talk about the technology and how it is uh, more helpful for NBK. When we signed this agreement with NBA, RippleNet, we were very passionate about this technology and we continue to do so. Basically, we wanted to have this cross-border remittance arrangement across the various corridors and we adopted this technology when NBK became the first bank in Kuwait to have this online cross-border remittances when we went live to Jordan, that was one of the biggest achievements that we had when we were talking about a complete digitization as far as our products and services are concerned. Ripple really supported us when we really wanted to connect with the banks. Initially, we were thinking about connecting only on the API on a standalone basis, but however, the consolidation actually happened when this technology was extended to NBK. The complete ecosystem that works is just not on remittances. This particular blockchain technology can be used across various sectors. It is not only into the financial institutions. We from NBK will provide a seamless fund transfer facility as one of the use cases across our global network. Today, NBK is present in 15 countries. The first thing that we are planning to do is to connect all our branches wherein the, there is a huge customer experience, enhanced customer experience in sending money across our network. The second is connecting to this large velocity of transactions that are happening, especially India and Egypt. We see a huge amount of remittances that is going from Kuwait, and we are already in discussion with partner banks where we are not present uh, in our own capacity, having a correspondent banking arrangement in these, uh, some of the countries and corridors where we can extend this facility. This comes purely from the remittance space. It doesn't stop out here. Blockchain technology can also be used for onboarding the customers digitally. We can onboard the customers. Again, there are certain regulatory issues which we are continuously talking to. Onboarding of customers is one point. Second, I can think of building loyalty programs for the customers, putting the reward points onto the blockchain. When it comes to retail lending, especially mortgages, personal loans, even there, this lending facility can also be extended on the blockchain. This is from the retail fragmentation. When it comes to corporate banking, this technology can also be extended to corporate banking. Let's look at the today's trade finance, a traditional trade finance transaction that is happening, which is more paper. There's a lot of paper operational hazards. So we can bring this into, this also can be moved onto this technology, bringing the complete cash management system onto one platform. Second, we are also uh, be working on what is called a supply chain finance where there are many vendors talking uh, under an umbrella of a corporate, where these transactions can again be centralized at one place using this technology. Blockchain has the potential to be a key enabler in order to provide a very transparent, secure way of doing these transactions. What is in for the consumer? For the consumer, he doesn't understand basically what blockchain probably is as I started my conversation with. For a consumer, we think it is basically the speed of the transaction it is the cost that will be lower for him and the transparency. Today, if the customer is sending money overseas, he knows what is the FX applicable. He knows what is the fee that he's going to pay. He is able to track the transaction. He is able to trace the transaction and see the status of the transaction on a real-time basis. So that is where the value addition is coming in. Also, pre-validation dramatically improves customer experience, enhances tremendous amount of transparency. For a bank, it is basically the velocity of payments and customer stickiness. It is just the beginning, there is a long way to go as a vision of our continuous aspirations and efforts to build a seamless customer experience across bank verticals by digitizing. So NBK is always have the thrust to provide the best of the best service and we, are, we have a huge roadmap in terms of digitizing our products and services and Ripple is one element into it. So thank you so very much uh, for giving us the time and opportunity to speak about this. And we are quite excited. I'm sure we'll have more updates going forward in the days to come. Thank you very much.